Hi, I'm Evelyn, and welcome to this week's Book Chat. This week on Book Chat, we will be looking at Jackie French. Jackie is an Australian author, an ecologist, a historian, is dyslexic, and an honorary wombat. Jackie French has written over 200 books and they're suitable for everyone. Here are a few that you might know. Jackie French will now answer the five book chat questions. Hi, I'm Jackie French. Okay, to try to answer your questions, how long does it take to write a book? Look, it can take three weeks. That's what happened with Flood. We had to write a book quickly to raise money for the Premier's Flood Appeal. And we managed to do it in three weeks. But other books like Hitler's Daughter take 20 or 30 years as the ideas brew. Every book has got its own length and its own time and sometimes you really need to actually write part of the book realize no it is not working it is not strong enough and just put it aside and wait or even trash the whole thing and wait until you have got enough ideas and can see it clearly enough okay what is the next question what was my favourite book to read as a child? Um, I can't give you one answer to that. Um, I have always read at least a book a day ever since I was about three. My favourite book then was Bob's about a cat and a mouse. Um, I loved Karata by Mary Grant Bruce. I loved a lot of the old Australian books for young people that had been written in the 1930s and the 1940s. I grew up when there weren't many Australian books for kids, except those few um, that my mother had had as a child, and even the girls' own annuals from um, 1910 that my grandmother had had as a girl. And so those were the ones that I read, and I think those have given me part of my love for history, because I was reading about history as it happened, knowing what girls in 1910 dreamt of doing, um, flying biplanes to deserted islands where they would find washed up treasure or finding amulets and, and going back to ancient Egypt. I, one book? No, I can't. And I couldn't give a single book now either. Um, if you got to spend one day inside a book, which book would you choose and what would you do? Um, I'm a writer. I get to spend every day just about inside a book as I write them. Um, at the moment, I am in Gallipoli in World War I and look, to be perfectly honest, um, no, I don't think... Um, I would, in fact, I'm quite sure I don't want to be there. Um, part of me would like to be um, at Eureka with Mrs. Puddleham um, eating from the stew pot. But again, um, I think Eureka was very smelly, very noisy and extremely dangerous. And so I probably don't want to be there either. Um, Dara of a wombat. Well, look, that's a true story. I live with, well, not that wombat now, but her granddaughter and her great granddaughter. So I think it would probably be in A Waltz for Matilda or one of the other books in the Matilda saga. Um, I think I would probably be having lunch by the river at Drinkwater, um, watching the river flow, talking to Matilda, talking to Tommy, talking to Jed, talking to Scarlett, um, actually meeting Clancy of the Overflow, um, possibly even Sheba the Elephant. But look again, I've lived those worlds, I've written those worlds, and also the Matilda saga is very much based on my own life, even though it begins in the 1890s. It's very hard to hide who you really are 
when you write fiction. So to a very large extent, those meals, those picnics, those swims in the river, those conversations, they're ones that I've had already. And the heroes like Sam or Clancy, to be honest, I'm married to him. Okay, what's the next one? Um, if you won $10 million, what would you do with the money? That's... I would probably stop to think for quite a while before I did anything. But the immediate answer would be that I would buy land. I would buy land that is either reasonably untouched or I know I could regenerate just as I have taken our land here and regenerated what was weeds, what was blackberry, what was rock, what had been destroyed by gold mining more than a century ago and turned it into a conservation reserve where now we have got 23 vulnerable, endangered or critically endangered species and it is preserved by covenant forever. I think I would buy more land with that. Land for threatened species, land for wombats, land in particular that I could share with kids. I think once you learn to love the land, once you know country and when you know it, you learn to love it deeply. Once you love it, you will fight for it. And that, of course, is what we need to do for the world in the future. We are all in danger. That planet is endangered. To really fight for it, to really know we want to fight for it. I think we need to know it first. We need to love it. And that's what I do with $10 million. Get land for kids to share and to love. What advice would you give to children who want to become better writers? Um, first of all, just write. Um, the more you do it, the better you get. Um, don't try to overwrite. What is more effective? I ran fast. I ran very, 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 very fast. Um, sometimes shorter is going to be better. Don't be impatient. It takes probably well, six years to be a doctor, longer to be a vet. It takes, what, three or four years to learn to be a plumber. It takes years to get the skills and the craft to be a writer. Um, don't worry if your work isn't published when you're 10 or 12 or 14. Often the most brilliant works are the ones that don't really work because you are trying to do something original. But also, too, when you are just beginning as a writer, your work may be 97% brilliant, 97% publishable, which means it won't be published. Don't ever ever think you are not a writer. If you love words, if you love stories, if the inspiration is there, people know if they are a writer. Look, of course, you always doubt whether you can write. Every time I write a book, for the first three days, I think it's not working, it's not working. I will never write a book again. I can't write anymore. And then suddenly, after three days, I'm in that world and it is almost as though the book is writing itself. So just write. The trash bucket is your friend. Um, just write until it starts to work and it is so much easier to rewrite. But one trick I found is to write the ending first. The last sentence, the last paragraph, the last page. Because when you know what you are writing about, you can write the ending. It's so easy to start, start a story and then get stumped um, after the first page, after the first chapter. But if you have written the ending, you know what you are writing about and you know where you are going and the work is so much faster and so much easier. So write the ending first and then write 
the first sentence, the most gripping sentence you possibly can to hook the reader in. Once you've written that sentence, once you've written the ending, then write all the other vivid bits of the book. Don't ever think you have to write your story from sentence number one right to the end, just like that. It doesn't work like that. Um, you can write any bits you want. Write the ending, write that first sentence, write bits, and suddenly you'll find one of those bits you keep going and you keep going and you keep going, or that first sentence is going to just tempt you to write more and more and more. The thinking is more important than the writing. Writing that ending, writing that first sentence, writing the vivid bits, those are going to get you to jump feet first into your story. And when you are there, look, it's like being in a swimming pool or the swimming hole down, down at the creek. Once you're in there, you find you are swimming and it is wonderful and the words will come. But never, ever doubt that you are a writer. If you are someone who loves words, if you are someone who loves stories, if you are someone where stories just come to you, one day you'll have the experience, one day you'll have the skill to craft the words and the sentences and the stories and put them together. And there will be a book with your name on it. There will be many books with your name on it. One day you are going to soar. Thank you, Jackie French, and thank you for watching this week's book chat. If you would like to read any of her books, they are available at the library.